The year is 1962. The carriage I'm in starts shaking uncontrollably. First, it's the luggage that begins falling, then the people, and finally, it's the train. The whole thing flipped on its side, completely derailed. But we weren't stopping, no. In fact, we were sliding along the icy field straight toward the canyon. Crash! We slide off the cliffside at 80 miles an hour and straight into the icy river below. Maybe it's the cold, maybe it's the ice, but I feel the water hit my face like shattered glass. Now that I think about it, maybe it was actually just the broken glass from what's left of the train. I'm completely numb, but not numb enough to know that my arm is broken. As I gasp for air, I know this is the end. If the cold doesn't take me, the water certainly will. Then, I hear sirens. I hear yelling. I feel someone pulling me out of the wreck before I pass out from the shock. This was my first brush with death. I am well, but my mother is sick. The year is 1963. I needed to see her now, before it was too late, but all the airlines are booked. Yet somehow I managed to persuade one of the cheaper airlines that I would not cause any trouble. This was my first time on an airplane, and I'm sitting next to the exit, taking in a view I've never seen before when... Oh no. The plane starts vibrating. I'm assured it's just turbulence when BOOM! The emergency door is ripped open. I'm sucked out of the plane, falling straight back toward planet Earth. If I'm lucky, this won't hurt too much. The air burns as I'm falling through it. I can't keep my eyes open. I don't know when I'll hit the ground. It's true what they say about your life flashing before your eyes, but it's not really memories, just broken thoughts. Some were insignificant, like when I fell off my bike as a child, and others were of my mom. I wanted to pray she would be okay, but I didn't have the time because here comes the ground. And bam! I lay in a haystack. In the distance, I can see a trail of smoke. The plane. I crashed. That was my second brush with death. I'm on a bus now. The year is 1966. Despite the rain and the snow on the tracks, we're going fast. This reminds me of the train accident four years earlier. There's even a river ahead. It's gushing with the heavy rain from the night before, but before it, there's a sharp turn. As we approach the turn, the bus, as you might expect, loses control. The whole thing skids into the river. Luckily for me, I had experience with falling into icy rivers because of freak accidents. So I swim to shore with only minor cuts and bruises. Me, too. Icy river, zero. This is my third brush with death. I am in my car. The year is 1970. I have stopped taking public transport. I'm on the highway when something starts blurring my windshield. I slow down. After everything I had been through, I couldn't take any chances. The car doesn't have wipers, and I remember thinking I ought to get them installed when I realized this something was coming from my engine. At first, I think it's steam, but that was before I could smell it. It was smoke. I stop my car on the side of the road, unbuckle my seatbelt, run out, and turn around just in time to see it catch on fire and blow. This was my fourth brush with death. I'm in my new car. This one has windshield wipers. The year is 1973. Sometimes you just know when something is wrong. And this was one of those times. Nothing blurring my windshield this time, but I open the window anyway to see if I can smell smoke. No, no smoke, just gasoline. Wait, I wasn't supposed to be able to smell gasoline. Then through the vents, 
where there was supposed to be cool air conditioning now, all of a sudden shot hot flames straight from the car's engine. I stop the car in the middle of the road, run out, and it catches fire again. I'd lost my hair, but kept my life. This was my fifth brush with death. I am walking. The year is 1995. I am minding my own business when I hear a screech coming my way. I turn to find a bus barreling straight toward me. There was no way it was going to be able to stop before it reached where I stood. Through the windshield, I can see the driver, his frantic expression rapidly approaching my own. BAM! It hits me. I am knocked down by this 30,000 pound vehicle. I'm on the floor and at this point I'm alive, but I'm trying to check not if anything's broken, but what isn't broken. To my surprise, and everyone else's. All I had were a couple of bruises and scrapes. This was my sixth brush with death. I decided to give cause another chance. The year is 1996. I am driving through a mountain. There is no sign of an engine fire or anything of that sort. I relax. When around the corner, a truck appears out of nowhere. It's coming full speed. There was nowhere to go. It's too large to turn and my car is too small to survive a collision with it. I swerve through the barrier and off the road. This was it. My car plummets, hitting every tree and boulder on its way down before it lands at the bottom, completely pulverized. Three seconds ago, I was on the road. Two seconds ago, I opened the door ready to leap out. One second ago, my car crashed through the barrier, the impact propelling me out. And now, while my car is an unrecognizable heap of metal, I'm 300 feet above it, hanging onto a branch on the side of the cliff. Either my arms or this branch were gonna give sooner or later. Then from above, I hear a man's voice, need a hand? It was the truck driver. He helps me up, apologizes, curses these roads, and takes me to the hospital. Not counting my failed marriages, this was my seventh brush with death. I think God wants to apologize. It's 2003. I am married. It's two days after my 73rd birthday. I never imagined I'd live this long. I'm feeling lucky. I go down to the shops, buy a ticket, and wouldn't you know it, I win. I win the million, one million dollars. I had lived through seven miracles, but I couldn't believe it. I buy a house, a boat, just in case something happens the next day. And of course, I buy insurance. But it's a lot of money, even if you think I deserve it. So I give it away to friends, to family, to people who need it more than an old man who's already lived quite a life. My name is Frayne Salak, and whether I am either the luckiest man in the world or the unluckiest man in the world, well, that's up to you. <laughs>